Hello and happy afternoon officially. I want to welcome everyone to our March Purple Chair Chat today. My name is Evelyn and my pronouns are she, hers. I'm an education and prevention specialist with Jana's Campaign and this Purple Chair Chat will be focusing on iconic women in the violence prevention movement because March is Women's History Month. Purple Chair Chats are live conversations instilling the knowledge, skills, and values necessary to prevent gender and relationship violence. We use these discussions to raise awareness, engage bystanders, promote healthy and respectful relationships, and encourage the development of new social norms. Before we get going today, I do want to mention that I'll be discussing some difficult topics regarding gender and relationship violence that might be triggering for some, especially when talking about some of these women's specific stories. So please do whatever you need to take care of yourself. And if you're in need of resources or services but do not know who your local advocates are, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll do our best to put you in contact with the right people. In fact, I know there will be some resources posted in the comment section of this live, so feel free to take a look at those. One more thing before we jump in, there are multiple resources used in today's Purple Chair Chat content. I want to cite those and give credit where credit is due. So they include womenshistory.org, Sanctuary for Families, womenagainstabuse.org, Miss Magazine, and the New Jersey Coalition Against Sexual Assault. Starting off today, I want to talk with you all about how Women's History Month itself officially came to be. Women's History Month began as a local celebration in Santa Rosa, California. The Education Task Force of the Sonoma County Commission on the Status of Women planned a Women's History Week in 1978. The organizers selected the week of March 8th specifically to correspond with International Women's Day. And this movement spread across the country as other communities initiated their own Women's History Week celebrations the following year in 1979. So by 1980, a ton of different women's groups and historians that were led by the National Women's History Project, which is today known as the National Women's History Alliance, they successfully lobbied for national recognition. And in February of 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring the week of March 8th, 1980 as National Women's History Week. So following presidents continued to proclaim a National Women's History Week in March until 1987 when Congress officially passed a law designating March as Women's History Month. And ever since 1995, each president has issued an annual proclamation designating the month of March as Women's History Month. So let's get into talking about some of the pioneers in the gender and relationship violence movement throughout history. Our first pioneer is Harriet Ann Jacobs. Harriet Ann Jacobs was born into slavery and faced years of sexual harassment and abuse from her white slave owner. After being banned from marrying a free black man, she entered into a relationship with an unmarried white lawyer. She had two children from this relationship and her owner then threatened to sell them into plantation work. This prompted Harriet to flee. She spent seven years hiding in family and friends' homes until she was able to travel north to Philadelphia in 1842. While in Philadelphia, Harriet obtained her freedom and joined the abolitionist movement. She worked to end slavery and supported refugees who were fleeing slavery as well. Harriet published a personal account of her former slave owner's sexual power in a book titled Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, and this helped to bring the issues of sexual exploitation of enslaved women into anti-slavery conversations that were happening all across the country at that time, and it completely changed the way people were viewing this issue back then. Our next pioneer is none other than Rosa Parks. 12 years before sparking the Alabama bus boycotts that we all know her for, Rosa Parks actually investigated sexual assaults and was an early pioneer in the anti-sexual violence movement. Parks was a branch secretary for the NAACP in Alabama, where she investigated the ways in which the criminal justice system impacted black communities across Alabama. Specifically, Parks had two focuses, protecting black men from false allegations and ensuring black victims of sexual violence by white perpetrators always had their day in court. 
Parks investigated Reese Taylor's case and also used the same tactics to support Gertrude Perkins after two white police officers abducted and sexually assaulted her. To this day, sexual misconduct by police is the second most common form of police misconduct and it disproportionately affects women of color. Rosa Parks was adamantly fighting to change that for a large portion of her life. Our next pioneer is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg, as we know, she's a true feminist icon, a tenacious dissenter, and she paved the way for women in law, but also changed the overall culture for women in America. She began her legal career in 1956 at Harvard as one of only nine women who were famously shamed for taking the place of a man within a class of about 500 students. Two years later, she transferred to Columbia Law School, where she became the first woman ever to be on two major law reviews and graduated in 1959 at the top of her class. In 1963, at a time when there were less than 20 female law professors in the United States, Ginsburg landed a teaching job at Rutgers Law School, and by the early 1970s, she had co-founded the groundbreaking Women's Rights Law Reporter and transferred to Columbia Law School, where she became the first tenured female professor in 1972. That same year, Ginsburg co-founded the ACLU's Women's Rights Project. Between 1973 and 1976, in her role as director, Ginsburg argued six gender discrimination cases before an all-male Supreme Court. She won five of those cases, transforming the constitutional understanding of gender and creating the legal framework for preventing discrimination on the basis of sex. Over the course of her 27 years on our nation's highest bench, Ginsburg brought her constitutional analysis to defend women and civil rights. A relentless champion for the rights of women and minorities, Justice Ginsburg embodied the values that lie at the core of our mission to end gender violence. Our final two pioneers we're going to be talking about today are somewhat of a duo, the first of them being Gloria Steinem. Gloria Steinem is an acclaimed journalist, trailblazing feminist, and one of the most visible, passionate leaders and spokeswomen of the women's rights movement. Steinem started her professional career as a journalist in New York, where she wrote freelance pieces for various publications. Her early articles tended to be for what was then called the women's pages, which were lifestyle or service features about female-centered or more fashion topics. Nevertheless, Steinem pushed on seeking more substantial social and political reporting assignments. She gained national attention in 1963 when Show Magazine hired her to go undercover to report on the working conditions at Hugh Hefner's Playboy Club, where she wrote an expose titled I Was a Playboy Bunny, which revealed the not-so-glamorous, sexist, and underpaid life of Playboy Bunnies. She worked hard to make a name for herself, and in 1968, she helped found New York Magazine, where she became an editor and a political writer. At New York Magazine, Steinem reported on political campaigns and progressive social issues like the women's liberation movement. Steinem soon realized the value of a women's movement magazine, and so she joined forces with journalists like Patricia Carbine and Letty Cotton Pogrebin to found Miss Magazine. It debuted in 1971 as an insert in New York Magazine, and by 1972, Miss Magazine became an independent, regular circulation magazine of its own. Steinem remained an editor and writer for the magazine for the next 15 years. Steinem's life has been dedicated to the cause of women's rights. She's led marches, toured the country as an in-demand speaker. In 1972, Steinem and feminists such as Congresswoman Bella Abzug, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, and feminist Betty Friedan formed the National Women's Political Caucus. It continues to support gender equality and to ensure the election of more pro-equality women into public office. Other organizations Steinem has founded in her vast career include the Women's Action Alliance, which promotes non-sexist, multiracial children's education, the Women's Media Center to promote positive images of women in media, and the Miss Foundation for Women. In the 1990s, she helped establish Take Our Daughters to Work Day, the first national effort to empower young girls to learn about different career opportunities. 
In 2013, President Barack Obama presented her with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian honor. And in her honor in 2017, Rutgers University created the Gloria Steinem Endowed Chair in Media, Culture, and Feminist Studies. And that brings us to our final um, amazing pioneer today, and that is Dorothy Pittman Hughes. Many of us have seen the iconic photo of Gloria Steinem and Dorothy Pittman Hughes from 1971 with their fists raised in the air. Pittman Hughes has had a more than 40 year long career of community organizing and entrepreneurship in New York City. From her founding of a community controlled child care center in the Upper West Side, to her cross country speaking tours on women's liberation with Gloria Steinem, to fighting racism in the Miss America pageant, and working for the empowerment of black business women all across the country. Throughout her life, Pittman Hughes sought to make the lives of ordinary women better by working to empower communities to meet their needs, whether that's through child care, recognition of black women's countless accomplishments, or access to economic resources or local he healthy foods. Steinem and Pittman Hughes met in 1968 when Steinem was writing a story for New York Magazine about Dorothy's Community Child Care Center. They became super fast friends, and from 1969 to 1973, they spoke up all, all across the country at college campuses, community centers, union halls, and so much more. They worked really well together, demonstrating the possibility of interracial sisterhood, of being, quote, sisters under the skin, as they frequently put it themselves. Pittman Hughes also organized the first shelter for battered women in New York City, co-founded the New York City Agency for Child Development, and was a co-founder of the National Black Feminist Organization. To this day, Dorothy's work shows the path forward, community-based activism that puts local needs first and places meaningful political agency within everyone's reach. And these are only a few of the hundreds and thousands of incredible women who have and continue to make waves to end gender and relationship violence. As this bit of history illustrates, the history of progress doesn't go back very far, and we know there is still so much important work to do. So let's keep working to make change together. And wrapping up for today, again, we always thank you for joining us, especially for this month's special Purple Chair Chat for Women's History Month. We want to, we love being able to have these live conversations, instilling the knowledge, skills, and values necessary to prevent gender and relationship violence. We hope you were able to learn something today that maybe you didn't already know about some really amazing women in history. And as always, if you need resources or services, but do not know who your local advocates are, reach out to us. We'll do our best to put you in contact with those right people. Thanks again, everyone, and looking forward to see you all next month.